Okay, we are here with the new Fox 36. Um, yesterday, the 38 and the 36 were released. Um, the 36 has been totally redesigned, and then the 38 is basically the basically the same fork. I mean, most of the characteristics are the same. Most. But yeah. with 38 millimeter stanchions. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so. This might be the first um, heritage color fork that is out there right now. Um, our homie Travis at Fox, um, one of our inside sales guys who we work closely with. Thanks, um, Travis. Yeah, he got this set up to us so that we can make a video with it. So thank you, Travis, very, very much. Yep. Travis is a G. Um, anyway, okay, so we got this fork from UPS today. Um, it came off of a brown truck and the color of it, it's a heritage color. Mm. Root beer. And it's UPS colored, baby. Root beer so, brown. It's the same color as the truck that it came off of. Um, we've been waiting for this for months, and we got it this morning, and I promise you we did not open the box to look at it yet. And, uh, yeah, we have just been having it sit on this table here since we announced the live stream this morning. So consider you guys are very close friends. because Jason was really <laughs> tempted to open the box and put some other stuff in it so we would get a surprise. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he did. But we stopped him from sneaking yeah. other items into the box. So anyway, um, basically what we're going to do is since we don't have the other camera set up like we were supposed to, um, Alex might take it off of the tripod and then do a some close-up shots with us here. Yep. So bear with us. We did the best that we can with the time that we had today. Um, but yeah, okay, so new 36? New 36, um, all new lowers. Increased stiffness, more oil flow, air bleeders, I'm excited about. The box smells better than last year. Right? It's about okay. the same. Okay. Noticeable to some riders, I'd say. Not noticeable to everybody. But yeah. Smoother than what last else? Year? New Look. axle, floating axle. I'm actually, that might be the thing I'm most excited about. Yeah. Um, most scenarios with the old axle setup. Um, didn't have any issues, but if you had a hub that was slightly out of spec, then you would have some sort of bind in the fork. And now with a floating axle, your fork tubes will be perfectly aligned, guaranteeing no stiction ever. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, at first when I saw that, when we got the little presentation for like the new products, I was kind of like, huh, what is that? And then like five minutes later, it clicked in my head. So it was pretty sweet. Um, yeah, well thought out. Yeah, and so. then every motorcycle fork that I can yeah. think of does, uh, you know, the axles, yeah. sort of a floating axle, uh, same thing, so. Yeah, and, and that's really one of the good. cool things too. Like a lot of people will always say like, Fox is really expensive and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I mean, little things like that, I mean, just to redesign how the axle works, it seems like it's simple. They don't just like go in and just like make a bigger hole and stuff. They have to like and manufacture entire parts to make this happen. And it went up, what, 30, 30 bucks? 20 bucks. 20 bucks yeah. from last year. Yeah. Not that much of a Forks price have been going up 20 bucks a year it, for yeah, so since Forks came out. All new out. chassis, yeah. completely updated damper, new air spring. You zoom in a little bit, maybe? Um, all for 20 bucks. Yeah, for 20 bucks, I like that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, sweet. Uh, should we open it or should we just keep talking some more? We can open it tomorrow. Oh yeah, okay, see you guys. Happy trails. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> let's open this sucker. Okay, sweet. So this fork is going to be going on, um, I think this this one's gonna go on my bike. Russ and Jason got the 38. Um, towards the camera. And uh, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, Alex, how do you wanna do this? You wanna uh, maybe? Sure. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I think take it off, I guess, and just uh, do a little unboxing with us. So, okay, cool. We got Alex behind the camera. Everybody so say a, hi, Alex. Um, so we got a 29. Oh yeah, when you zoom, I totally forgot on the live stream, it then shows the zoom on there. So you're just gonna have to go within like, keep the same zoom. Sorry guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, so 29, short offset, 44 millimeter um, offset. 160 millimeters of travel. Yep. I'll probably bump it up to 170. The 36 is compatible, uh, or can be 130, 140, 150, 160, and 170. Um, and then uh, the 38, 150, 160, 170, 180. So um, yes, it's 150. I just learned that it's 150. Dude. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, Travis wasn't in there. Travis uh... sent me skews. They didn't say if this can go up to 180 like last year's 36, but if you're going up to 180, that's the cool thing. Now you get a 38. So, yes. um, and, and for most people at 170, 30, 38 might be a 
yeah. something to consider. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, or if you're a bigger, super aggressive rider yeah. at 160. All right, here we go. Yeah, buddy. Okay, 36, root beer, heritage color. Um, it's got a bag. It's got a bag. The bag is proprietary to Fox. Um, oh. Okay, sweet. Cardboard, whoop. Um, it's got stuff. Yep, we got the okay. same stuff. We got a manual. We got some tokens. Looks like the same tokens. Yep, same tokens. All right, Na2. Same two. Ones. That's yep. good. Sweet, okay. And manual. Fork, baby. Um, so, yeah. Got this bag. Get it. <sighs> Gotta be careful with this. I don't want to drop this on the ground. All right. Just take looks, that off. It looks better without the bag. <gasps> oh. <laughs> um, looks better without the bag. Sweet. All right. 36. Oh, it's got a little bit of like a sparkly flake inside of the paint. Yeah, metal flake. It's kind of like a chocolatey, root beery. Something. Um, air bleeder valves, those are new. There's no air in it yet, because I haven't ridden it yet. Um, this is gonna be able to purge some air out of the lowers that gets trapped down there. Rush, you wanna maybe explain a little bit more what scenario you'd use those for and what they'd be useful for? Well, if your elevation changes and with heat with riding, you're gonna build up some air pressure inside your forks. So you can easily just hit the button. It'll equalize the pressure between your atmospheric pressure and the pressure inside the fork. And so it'll work the way it should at any elevation and any temperature. Sweet, so just more consistency. I mean, um, a company like Fox, consistency and performance is always like the two things that they're trying to increase um, little by little every year. And uh, it definitely pays off every, every several years. And I think that this new redesigned fork is going to definitely be a little bit more consistent with those bleeder valves especially. People love those on their downhill forks. They've been asking for them for a whole long time. Um, let's see. You can also see on the back, uh, there's channels cut into the fork here uh, for more oil to flow up towards the bushings and the foam ring. So it's gonna keep the fork uh, a little bit more lubricated than the previous version, which mm -hmm. is a great thing. Yep, uh, a little bit more room for the air too. Um, and also obviously the channel for the air to go through the bleeder ports. Yep. Um, let's see. Also on the arch, uh, it's got uh, also a different shape but it also sticks out a little bit further than the old ones. On some bikes with some massive head tubes like they have like now. Like evils and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, you'd have a little bit of clearance issues and this one should be compatible with any frame no matter how massive the head tube is. Yep, and uh, according to Fox, uh, that design also increased a little bit of stiffness. Sounded like um, it. So uh, yeah, let's see what else. Um, well, some easy things that we can go over. Um, the crown is now shiny black, they call it, or gloss black instead of matte black like we saw for the past several years. Um, also on the heritage forks, um, we have the grip two damper, again, um, just like we had before, but the adjustment knobs are all black instead of blue, so it just makes it all super blacked out. Same thing with the air top cap, that's all blacked out as well. Um, let's see, so, Basically the same, it's very similar design um, on the bottom of the fork, um, on the air side. However, on the damper side, it's a little bit different, a little bit more cut out. Um, and yeah, we can see that floating pull the, axle right pull there. The off. Are the knobs black? Knobs are red. red. One cool thing, and they actually started popping up in the later um, model year 2020s, High speed and low speed rebound. The knobs actually have the a laser etch in there. Yeah, laser etched with the HSR and LSR. Just it's just easier to um, to adjust when you're on the fly. You don't have to look at the decal or anything. Um, the heritage forks they come with a cabolt or cable, whatever you want to call it. Just basically a solid axle um, that is bolt on and does not use a quick release. And the ones that are um, the ones that are for the um, cabolt are stepped. So that's like that floating design. Um, and yeah, you're gonna have to do that pinch bolt every time that you use the, or take your wheel on and off with that. But with the QR, you just set it once. Yep. So, QR, you set it the first time, yeah. and then after that, it'll be aligned. Yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, and then the Grip2 damper, it's technically still a Grip2 damper. Yep. Same adjustments, high speed compression, low speed compression, high speed rebound, low speed rebound. However, um, there is something they call variable valve control or VVC for short. Which they had in the rebound before. They had in the rebound before, yep. but now it's also in the compression, in the compression circuit side. under yep. the high speed um, compression. Um, you wanna explain that a little bit more in detail? The 
to my understanding anyways, the way it works is kind of like a leaf spring. Instead of putting pressure on the shim stack directly, it moves the leaf spring as it adjusts. Um, what was it, for more consistency yeah. out of it? Um, I do know on the new ones, you the number of clicks has changed. And is this one eight on the high speed and? Yeah, I believe so. And 10 or 12, I can't remember on the, on the low speed, um, but the entire range of adjustment worked, whereas on the old one, on the compression, you could only go so far out before it really didn't do anything different. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, I think it's supposed to be a little bit better performance, a little bit more consistent, easier to adjust. Easier to adjust. Um, apparently, the, uh, we heard that the clicks are a little bit more noticeable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on Fox versus like, let's say a Lyric Ultimate versus the Fox 36 with the Grip 2, um, I'm a lighter rider. Typically, I can really feel, like if I add a click of low speed compression with a Lyric, I can feel a difference. Oh, yeah. However, I'm doing about two to three clicks with the Fox and then maybe then fine tuning backwards, and that's yeah. where I can tell a difference. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that as a lighter rider and just being a little bit, um, being a little bit more sensitive to the adjustments that you're making. Of course, this is the factory. Got the Kashima coating. Love it or hate it. It's got the Kashima coating. Um, it looks cool, smooth. Yeah, less um, stiction. Yep. Let's see. Uh, cool. Well, I mean, I do you remember and what Travis said about the brake? It's still a 180 direct mount, or is the 38 might be a 200 direct mount. I can't remember, but. I don't remember either. Yeah. By the looks of it, that looks like a 180 direct mount. Looks like a 180. We're still getting used to the specs because this literally just came out. Yep. And uh, yeah, we have not learned it like the back of our hand quite and, yet. And so. the air springs changed for this year. Air spring has definitely changed. It's yeah. got some updates as far as vo negative volume. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to take a look inside and see you know, what yeah. exactly they did. Um, but I know it has some updates to make it a little bit more refined. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that's the 36. Uh, yeah. Elliptical steer. What? Elliptical steer. Oh, on that's on the 38. 38 only. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, let's see. So, if we're talking 36 and 38, I mean, we pretty much got the 36 down. Yeah. So, this is a 36. So, in the title, it might have said that, we're gonna, that we had a 38. We don't have a 38 yet. 38s, don't, nobody really has one yet. I'm sad. We're going to have them next Tuesday. Um, ETA. So I'm hoping to ride it on Tuesday. He's going to ride that Tuesday, and uh, I'll ride him with. I'll ride the 36 with him. So um, basically, the first series of videos that we're going to have after we ride these things for a couple weeks and really get to know them and all the specs yeah. and just have a way better understanding of how they feel, um, the tech side, inside and out, all that stuff, just product info in general. We're going to have some th videos like 36 versus 38. Yeah. Um, just a video, just a refined video about the 36 and all the specs. And, and we'll then, have some time to tear them down and really take a look at the insides yep. and, and uh, inform you guys as much as we can about what's going on inside and outside of this thing. Yep. Um, what do you think? Should we basically just talk about the 38 then? I mean, we covered everything for the 36. Uh, so. I mean, if you guys are anticipating the 38. Um, I mean, other than larger stanchions, the other cool thing that I'm looking forward to is the inside of the steer tube up in there. Uh, it's elliptical, so it's going to have a little bit more reinforcement fore and aft, and it should increase the stiffness without adding too much weight to that guy. Um, it's got a new air spring also, uh, very similar damper. Um, adjustments are the same in the 38. Um, and I can't remember the weight, to be perfectly honest. Of? The 38 versus oh, the Oh, I thought it was like 200 half. grams or something like that. Yeah, about a half pound. 200, 250 of, grams. Um, so. Which, I mean, isn't much. If you're looking for a stiffer fork, then you're probably not going to care about weight. So, but. No, my bike is about 35 pounds already, and adding another half pound or so to it, I'm probably not going to tell the difference. Yeah. I just want a bigger, beefier fork, and it's already a, basically a single crown downhill bike anyways. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, so like a 38, let's just say, like, I ride a Da Vinci Spartan. Russ rides a Da Vinci Spartan. Yep. If we want to bump our travel up to one, especially 180. Mine's at 180 now. This is at 180. Mine's at 170. I like mine at 170. Yep. Um, I think that the 38 is going to be a great fork if you're trying to literally smash through concrete brick walls. Um, concrete brick is that? That's not even the right thing. Concrete block walls. But <laughs> concrete, you can have concrete brick. You can have concrete. Why you can not? have whatever you want. It's a free world. But anyway. 
Um, so 38 and 36, 36 versus 38 in like a simple way to, to look at it. And, you know, even if even after we ride these things, we already have a pretty good presumption on how they're going to ride. Um, we've ridden the 36 quite a bit. Yeah. We would imagine that the 38 is going to ride like a 36, but be more stiff. So. Well, obviously. Yes, exactly. So with that said, <laughs> I, we can I, we can safely kind of a little bit pigeonhole um, who might be better with 36, who might be better for 38. I'm going to say that 38 is going to be 160 if you're a bigger or a super aggressive rider who just wants a big old stiff fork. Yeah. 170. Kind of gray area, or just 180 if you if you're you know running 180. Yeah, I kind of look at it as the 36 is your aggressive trail, uh, all mountain kind of fork. If you want to get uh, do a little bit of everything and be aggressive with it, uh, it's a it's a great fork. Whereas I think the 38 is really going to hit a home run with those guys who kind of want that single crown downhill um, kind of fork to smash through stuff and um or possibly even at 160 you know guys who are just bigger guys who just want a little bit more there sometimes even just looking down at that size will give you the confidence to bust through stuff yeah well um i'm gonna stick with the 36 right away and, and I'm then gonna try the 38. and then i think we should swap for yeah. a week and i'll do the 38 you do the 36 and i think that would be the best way to tell some some differences and ride our bikes a lot because yeah. it's, it's actually really nice outside right now which doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I'm excited so. to uh, have uh, some ride time in the mornings next week and, and a new fork. Yeah, totally. Um, what else? The new Float X2, DHX2 redesigned. Similar, but different. S but way different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. valving's different. Uh, yeah, the high-speed rebound is now on the mid-valve instead of on the base valve. And so it should give a lot more differentiation between the high and low speed and I know there was some other some other reasons that they had to do it in the in the tech docs and we'll get into that later um, but uh, on the float x2 which personally I'm really looking forward to because yeah, it's been one of my favorite shocks of the last few years um, they've even kind of touted as a little bit less stiction in it and it's I mean it's already kind of the best of both worlds shock in my opinion if someone who kind of wants a coil and kind of wants an air shock uh, it really does everything and to update it and make it possibly better you know make the best better yeah that would be awesome then yeah i'm looking forward to the float x2 the most out of out of anything i am too um i mean i know that the forks got slight revisions but the float x2 i think is going to be pretty freaking sweet so yeah the 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 38's got my number. Yeah. That's okay. I've been dreaming of that. Um, but yeah, the 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 Float X2 is as far as the rear shocks go. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward it's to. It's gonna be sweet. I'll spend some time on the coil and kind of get a feel for that one too. Um, I ran the the DHX for a little bit this year, and that was great with some progressive springs on it. Um, but uh, you know, you don't quite have that poppy, lively feel that you do out of out of the air shocks you know there's some some benefits to a coil and there's some benefits to air and yeah, yeah the float x2 is i was just kind of looking at the comments and uh -huh. someone asked and this is a good a good point 38 on hardtail Ooh, um i mean on jason's hardtail yeah with a 63 degree heading well i think if you got a why like not? a root down yeah. 160 millimeter or, or more fork yeah if you got an aggressive hardtail um big stiff fork would be pretty sweet I, I, well, you know, I I like the big forks, yeah. and I, I had a totem back in the day, and you know, I liked it back then, and you know, this new seems like you know there's hints of something from Rock Shock coming, and and with Fox stepping up and and bringing you know it out first, um, I think there's going to be good good things this year in that uh, that big fork category. Oh. One second, guys. I'm going to read some comments yeah, and see what, if we can get some questions. All right, let's pull this computer up here and try to not unplug everything and ruin the day. All right. Uh, um, someone asked 38 on dirt jumpers. I think the 36 is probably good enough on a dirt jumper, honestly. I um, think so. You know, if you're doing 80-foot step downs on your dirt jump bike, then maybe. But huh? a 36 is a, <laughs> a 36 already is a beefy dirt jump fork. Oh man, someone was asked, they said that the crown should have been color matched. 
I, I you know, I you could go either way, but honestly, the black with the root beer, it does look really good. I mean, it's a brand new fork, so it's gonna look good. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, sometimes I, there's a lot of comments, so I have to scroll up and, and find some. Someone says they prefer Walmart forks. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, if, if you can make that work, um, I'd be scared. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Does, does Walmart make a 38? Ooh. We, we, should, should see. we should do a shootout. Oh. We should go get a Walmart fork. Versus a 38? Versus a 38. That might be interesting. Can we buy just, can you just walk into Walmart and just buy a fork? Hi, um, I'm, I need help shopping for a fork. And you think they might send us to the kitchen area? Well, if the <laughs> <laughs> if the bike's $200, then uh, I guess the fork is a $200 uh, yeah. fork. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> We're not having many product specific questions. It's a lot of just random like, um, uh, just asking Little random chat. questions about like, yeah, they're just chat, people are just chatting right now. Um, so let's see, um, people, yeah, you know, I have seen, this is one thing, people were asking me earlier about like, potentially putting a 38 on like a downhill bike that they wanna be more like, trail-y. So, you, um, could, you could do that. The I don't know specifically on the 38 what the axle to crown is, but I know on the current crop of forks versus the downhill bikes, uh, usually about a 180 single crown has about the same axle to crown as most of the 200 downhill forks have. So in terms of angles, you could totally do it if you wanted to you know, do, do X-ups and stuff on your downhill bike. Um, yeah. You could, it, it was a thing that people did 10 years ago or so and it was popular that little mini dh yeah. kind of thing totally so it's possible yeah we had another question and i'm pulling up my all of my skews here um someone asked if there's going to be a 38 e-bike fork and there are definitely going to be e-bike 38 forks there's going to be two different styles there's going to be the e-tuned which is just the damper tune mm -hmm. in the same chassis and then the what do they call the other one uh, e tuned. E tuned. Then, here, I don't know. I don't maybe remember. it's just a 38E, mm -hmm. which is an actual E specific chassis, which I believe is the crown, which really changes. Model. Here we go. Float e bike. Okay, so the 38s, we got a float. It looks like there's only one. Um, it looks like there's only one style of the e bike 38. Um, that's 29. Let's see if there's a 27.5. So there's just the float, the e-bike plus. That's uh, shiny black. Um, is the only option. Short offset. Most of these forks. There's really only the, um, like. I, so I saw on on our presentation the other day, they were saying that the 29 was not going to come in a 51 mil offset, and on pink bike, it said that it did come in a 51. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, the black, black only. Black only. So if okay. you want. So like short offset 44 for 29 or mm -hmm. regular offset for 27.5, 44 millimeter offset. And those, that's like, that is like the, the standard right now for Fox's I, forks. I, I was surprised to yeah. see that they made them in a 51, honestly. They're only making, so if you need a 51 millimeter offset fork still, well, A, we'd recommend doing a 44, um, unless you like that longer wheelbase. Um, and you can only get that 51 mil offset in shiny black, so no color options. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot, well, a lot of people do call in and ask kind of what's the difference. And I guess if I had to put it in a way that's easy enough to understand without going into too many technical details, I do find on the same bikes that I've ridden back to back, um, there's not one that's, that's, great and the other one's terrible it's more of the longer offset the 51 mil on the 29er i feel you have to put more steering input with your hands and on the shorter offset you put a little bit more steering input with your body so it's just it just changes the the way it handles and you know one's not the end all be all but i definitely prefer the shorter offset on most of the 29ers mm -hmm. And then outside of that realm too, um, if you want a 37 millimeter short offset 27.5 fork, um, then that's only available in shiny black as well. So no short offset 27.5 color versions, which probably not that big of a deal. So 
Yeah. Unless you really Less want to color. Less companies <laughs> are doing, yeah, doing that in the 27 and the 29, but. Yeah, pretty much um, everyone's just running 44, 44, no matter the wheel size. Yeah. So, um, someone just asked if they're gonna have the bolt-on fenders. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a bolt-on fender for, that works with the 36 and the 38. Yep. So, um, yeah, they're 25 bucks, super cheap. Um, it's like an actual, like, molded plastic fender. Yeah, it it's looks, not just like a mucky nut style one. It looks great in, in the photos. I'm excited to see one in person and see, you know, the length of it and see how it compares to some of the other options. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we had another question. Um, got a question, factory versus performance versus performance elite. Let's other, let's not even get into like the stanchion, um, coating, but, um, or like Kashima versus black. Let's just say, Factory has Kashima coating. Yep. Performance and Performance Series Elite have a black anodized coating finish on their stanchions. Yep. And the dampers are different. So the, the Factory gets Grip 2. The Performance Elite gets Grip 2. Yep. And then the Performance, performance just gets the grip. The grip same damper. fork that, or same damper that's in the Marzocchi yep. Bomber Z1. So the Factory so. and the Performance Elite are basically the same fork, just with different stanchion coatings. And then the, um, the, Performance Elite and Performance um, get the same stanchion coatings as each other. They both get the black, just with different dampers. Yeah, totally. Should be able to Z Z1 has the same chassis as 36. Anyone else? Um, I saw another question that I liked. Someone was asking if you can buy uh, black Grip 2 top caps for different forks. I don't know. The previous ones you could not. Yeah, you could um, not. But I don't know if they're going to do that um, this time or not. Mm-hmm. Um, is it is it worth is it worth it swapping a Fox 36 for perform from performance for a 36 Fox factory? If you want Kashima because it looks cool and but but you've already got a performance series fork. I mean, you kind of already know the answer. You probably already stuck sold that you want to buy one just to have Kashima. But I mean, from a performance yeah. standpoint, and there's a, there's a there's definitely a difference. Um, I think certainly at lower speeds on smaller bumps, um, you do have less stiction from the Kashima coat uh, versus the, the the black coating that they have um, at higher speeds when you're smashing through stuff. I, I, I certainly can't tell the difference personally between the two. Yeah, it's it's really more of like that showroom kind of feel, and then. And then maybe yeah, you're you're doing the the climb up to something, and you got little roots. You can feel it there, but mm -hmm. uh, that's probably about it in terms of the the coatings. The damper, um, I yeah, big difference in yeah. in terms of certainly in ter terms of uh, tunability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be the thing that would sell me is the damper, just having a different damper. But if you got a performance fork that doesn't have a grip two damper. You can put a grip two damper in it and still put a grip two damper good. in oh, it. Oh, one thing yeah. worth noting that I re, uh, learned today is that the new, the newly revised grip two damper is not going to be backwards compatible with the other previous 36s. Correct. So, Nor is the updated air spring. Correct. So this is all new stuff specific to this chassis fork. So that means if you have a 2015 to 2020 model year fork, then you just have to use that basically the previous version of the grip 2 damper which is still and, great which is still great yeah. you know it's going to be an excellent upgrade if you're not wanting to just spend a thousand bucks on a brand new fork yeah if you got an older one and want to upgrade and have it you know feels as good as it can then yeah it's mm -hmm. you know 300 and some odd dollars yeah for the damper instead of a thousand bucks plus for a new fork um, someone just asked, uh, they said they're a bit late to the stream and they wondered if there's any updates to the DPX2. We haven't really talked about the DPX2 much, but I, the decals it's, are new and yeah. there's a little bit different difference with the valving, I think. So they changed the valving internally on it to kind of update everything. And for the most part, the chassis of it is the same. Um, I would say it's 98% the same, the same shock, uh, just some updates and Functionability as far as the damping goes mm -hmm. is what it sounds like. Yeah, uh, Nick Hansen, he just asked a question. Nick is a, a awesome writer and photographer who writes blog posts for us on our website. If you go to the blog post section of our website, you've probably uh, read one of his writings and they're very well written. He does a great job of comparing things and uh, doing awesome reviews. He just asked, are there any shipment delays with the 
rollout um, expected. So everyone knows there's like a weird coronavirus situation going on, which is delaying some things and products. However, right now it seems as if everything is pretty on par. The 38s and the 36s are slated to be here next week. Yep. Flodex 2s are about four or five weeks out. Just say we got about a month and before DHX2s. stocks get here. So yeah, so um, forks are going to be an easy thing. We've got um, we've sold a bunch of forks and shocks today, and most people are pretty understanding of the situation. They're going to get their fork um, next week, and then their upgraded shock in a few weeks. So that's going to give them some time to dial in their fork first. That might be nice. They're not going to be over super overwhelmed on setting. So who knows? Yeah, but I know a lot of a lot of people are stuck at home, and um, you know, it's nice to have something coming in. No, it's totally cool to just be patient and just wait, right? Well, yeah, I know how it is. Yeah, it's... totally. Yeah, we well, we were we were kind of bummed because we requested our personal parts for our own bikes, and we got like DHX twos and Floatex twos and the new forks, and then we're just getting forks, and we don't have shocks for the next few weeks, so we're kind of a little bummed about that. But hey, yeah. we got to be as patient as possible. So, um, uh oh, the phone's ringing. Jason, get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, someone asked, is the third there, is the 38 going to be available in root beer color? No, it's no. not. The 38 is going to be uh, available in shiny black, pistachio, and shiny orange. Yep. So, yeah, the pistachio is super sick, though. It does look great, especially, I think, if you have a darker colored bike. I think the pistachio is going to look really cool on there. I've got a silver and greenish bike, and so I'm, not gonna I'm sticking with the black fork. Yep. It's... Yeah, I've got a black and kind of like a goldish tan. So I think that this root beer is going to look pretty It does. It looks dialed. really good in yeah. person. And then, let's see. Will there be a change to the 34? So the 34, in essence, is basically 99% the same. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is now a Grip 2 damper available for the Fox 34. So you can not only purchase your new 34 with the Grip 2 damper installed in it from the factory. However, also now there's going to be a... Grip 2 upgrade kit, which you can install into your current Fox 34, and I think that's going to make a lot of people happy. So, and do we know if that's going to fit in the Z2? Um, also, I don't know. I would hope that it's going to. I would assume it is because they didn't change the 34 chassis. Yep. So, we'll find that out and let you know. But I think that a lot of people will really like that. That would be sick. Um, so you can buy a Z2, save some money up front, put a Grip 2 damper in it down the line. Yep. That'd be pretty cool. Um, David asks, any official date for when these go on sale? Um, David, these are available for purchase right now. We're shipping orders out as soon as they come in. Basically, nobody has these in their hands yet. This might be the first Heritage Fork out in the wild for a shop. Um, luckily, we are one of the pe first people to get that in our hands so we could do a live stream and tell some people about the new product. Um, but basically, if you're placing orders for forks, those are gonna most likely ship out next week to you. If you're yeah. placing an order for a shock or a fork with a shock, then the shock is going to ship out in a few weeks. We're hearing, I think, four, five, six weeks. I'll have better ETAs tomorrow. If any of you guys that are watching actually want to order one of these tomorrow after this live stream is done, um, then basically you can do so. And uh, just let us know what size you need and we'll give you an ETA. We'll have better ETAs tomorrow. So um, someone just asked, do you think that pedalable downhill, pedalable dual crown forks are on the way? Pe well, I, I don't think it's the dual crown fork that makes it pedalable. I yeah. mean, I was half tempted to stick a dual crown on my bike to try it for, you know, at least a little bit. If the axle to crown's the same and you got a bike with a decently steep seat angle, then, you know, I guess why not? Mm -hmm. sure. um, let's see. Also, somebody just asked, um, now that the 2021 stuff is out, are the 2020 series going to drop in price? I mean, every year that something new comes out, yeah. there's going to be some stuff on sale. We do have some model year 2020 stuff still left in stock. Um, if you guys need something specific and want to know how much it's going to go for, typically it's it's just discounted at a pretty much fixed percentage. It just makes it easy for you guys to yeah, save us, some money. Shoot us an email. Yeah. Um, Info at thelostco.com. Um, here, I'll just pop our email in here. Um, so you guys can choose an email. Uh oh, Alex, you getting hot? Oh, <laughs> are you getting? Is your arm getting tired holding that camera? Um, let's see. I guess you could probably put it back on the the tripod now. 
Yeah, you could probably put it on the tripod. Um, anyway, uh, somebody asked if you can eat spaghetti with it. I mean, I don't see why not. I think that the way that they redesigned it with the um, with the air bleed valve, if you get some pasta sauce inside of it, you can just squirt that out. It might be part of a good weight loss program because I don't think you could eat it very fast. Yeah. So if you're trying to slow yourself down with meals, I definitely eat fast and it's kind of obnoxious. Maybe I will try eating my next spaghetti dinner with the Fox 36. You're you probably gonna use the 38 though, because it's stiffer. It might shovel more food in. You think it's flexier? <laughs> the 36 <laughs> is flexier when eating with it? Oh God. It would be the most expensive fork in my kitchen. Yep. Um, two guys exploring Texas asks, Rock Shocks or Fox? What will make me change my mind from Rock Shocks? Well, I don't know. Um, I mean, they're, they they're, both make great products. I mean, we have spent a ton of time and we'll um, have a video coming out sometime soon about probably 36 versus Lyric, most likely. Um, but, you know, we both spent a ton of time on the Lyric and on the 36, and they're great. And you know, if I had to just do a quick summary, I would say that the the 36 maybe feels just a little bit more supportive on the trail whereas the lyric i think feels a little bit more lively yep um it feels like it it kind of pops and moves whereas the 36 kind of feels nice and planted I, you can't go wrong either way i don't think i mean they're both a great product and i think people always work. ask what's better the lyric ultimate or a fox 36 factory and i always say put it like this they're both the best fork yeah. They just feel a little bit different. I always put it in, like Russ has his like in a nutshell, and my nutshell is always the Fox forks feel more supportive and the Rock Shocks forks feel more absorbent. Um, like it just, absorbent. it just, absorbent. I like that. Yeah, the the Lyric is just like, it, it's, it moves quite a bit. It's active. It's mm -hmm. always doing something and, and it's, all, it's working hard and it's, um, it's just a different feeling. Active is a very good word. The 36, it's weird because even though the Lyric is like moving more, the 36 still feels like it's got just the same amount of traction. It's just a little bit different feeling. Um, it's it's yeah, weird. Yeah, I would even say in pure terms of traction, I, tr traction I would the 36. say 36. Yeah, Thir traction 36. And then pure, what would we say, and pure this, Lyric Ultimate. I just mean, like. Pop. For, pop for sure yeah I, I like it just seems like in corners and off of stuff it seems like it wants to you know i would say more just explode out of the corner mm -hmm. um i mean that's yeah it's it's a you got to ride them both to understand but it's it's hard that to say that they both are the best fork and that one moves a lot while you're riding and then the other one is more supportive but they also yeah. but they both offer amazing tractions and i mean you're just gonna have fox customers who you know they're they're fox people tried and true and they're gonna buy the fox and they're gonna say that it's the best thing ever and you're gonna have rock shot customers who are gonna say the same thing and they're both right um but yeah they're i couldn't pick a a definitive winner for sure here's a great question just straightforward um that question is from Lynx6. They said, do you think it's worth upgrading from a 2019 Fox 36 grip to 180 millimeter, can you grab that phone out of here, um, to the new Fox 38? Okay, so you basically had the previous top tier fork and you're just wondering if you should just go to a 38. Well, it's a different, different chassis. I mean, if that's what you're after is that bigger, stiffer fork and for more downhill riding, then then yeah i mean that's you know i've i've got a 36 on my bike at this very moment actually no i have the lyric on there at right now i just changed it out last week mm -hmm. and i'm yeah i'm excited to go to the 38 i think it's going to be great for the way i ride i don't think it's going to be for everyone mm -hmm. uh, but if let's you just want say this downhill fork yeah. which is what i want i want a downhill single crown fork i can't wait yeah and i wanted to point out remember when we got the presentation, the 38's coming out. We all walked away from the computer, super pumped, and <laughs> we started naming the trails that we were gonna take the 30 out to, 38 out to yep. first. And that's the kind of fork where you're like, that trail is gnarly, it's steep, it's chunky, 38. Oh, like, yeah. that's the fork where you like, you pinpoint where you're gonna ride. 36 is gonna be better, 
for a little bit of everything. The 38 is going to be like, you're, yeah. I want that chunk killer. Yeah, so. you know, and admittedly, even though I'm ex super excited to get the 38 on my bike and it's going to fit the way I ride, you know, the 36 for our local trails and, you know, some more reasonable kind of riding for most people, I think it would probably be a more, um, I guess, reasonable choice. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, next question. Um, this would be a good one for you there, Russ. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Oh, there's so many questions. Um, would you put 223 rotor on your enduro bike? I have a 220 mil rotor on my enduro bike currently. Um, if you like to ride really steep trails, uh, it's great. I think in the bike park, it's going to be great this summer for just normal riding on your average trails, probably overkill. It does get a bit touchy in some slow speed situations, but if you, yeah, if you like to ride steep trails to where the kind of trails where you can't stop even if you want to, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if we can actually answer this question. Someone says, I can't find the bomber dirt jumper fork anywhere. I think only athletes have access to it right now. Can we actually answer that question? Um, we could answer the question, but it would void your warranty and possibly catch your entire house on fire. Yes. Um, you we, can make one. You can make one. I wouldn't, if you're not in a suspension shop, I wouldn't suggest making one yourself. Um, Jason, our mechanic and sales guy, he we, built we, himself one. Yeah, we've made them. I've lowered forks beyond what is capable from the factory. Um, if someone really wants one and, um, and you know, you wanna have us do it, uh, I, would, I would make you one for sure. Sweet, here's a good question. Do you, uh, Wilderness Trail Bikers ask, do you prefer Rock Shocks or Fox on your rear shock? Um, the Super Deluxe Ultimate is an awesome shock on the right bike. I yep. feel like it's a little bit more sensitive to what kind of bike it's on for some reason. I think so too. I didn't right? like it on my Process, but I love it on my Spartan. Well, and I, th I think the hardest thing too is that since Rock Shock really tunes them for each bike, if you can get that shock that's made for your bike, it's great. If not, it's not like the Fox shocks where they come as a one shock fits most in terms of damping go as far as the damping. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit hit or miss. I love my Super Deluxe. It works great um, as a general rule. I mean, still the Float X2 is, I would have to say is the best shock I've ever ridden. Yeah, yeah, Float X2 is just, you can't really beat the Float X2. Air shock wise, you can't beat that thing. It's crazy good. Yeah, I, I would adjustable. like to do some back to back tests now that I do have a bike now, I have a DaVinci Spartan, and it does come stock uh, with the Super Deluxe Ultimate on it, and I put the Megneg can on it, um, and it is absolutely awesome. Um, so I, I can't wait to run those two shocks back to back. I was actually pleasantly surprised when I took the coil shock off and went back to that. Um, I would have to say all around, I prefer that, uh, that Rock Shocks Air Shock from the coil that was on there. It's not mm -hmm. a supple, but it does more things. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, kind of the same way the Rock Shocks versus Fox Fork. I feel like the Super Deluxe again. It's just, it's just, it's moving. It's active. It's poppy. Flow X Two's got that really planted traction feel. Um, I mean, you can set it up to feel no matter how. Like you can yeah. set it up to feel poppy or traction-y, but I still feel like my Super Deluxe is a little bit more active. It, so. Yeah, I, and I think too, the, the Float X2s, it, it, in terms of the, the 2020s, um, they do feel a little bit more coil-like in terms of stiction. They, they seem to like really want to get moving and really conform to the trail the best. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, yeah, the RockShock, it feels really poppy, really lively, um, but it, you know, it's yeah. got more stiction than a, than mm -hmm. a coil. Of course, yeah, always will. Um, John Surfer asks, hey, I don't see a Grip 234 on Fox's website. Where would I be able to get an upgrade kit? Um, they're not really out yet. Um, if, you, if you can, just shoot us an email to info at thelostco.com and we're gonna have them coming in. We can help you out, get that all sorted for mm -hmm. you. So it should be easy.
um, Braden Mills is excited for us to or for us to do a DHX2 video for him to watch, and I am excited to make a DHX2 video. I'm too, because that means that we have been riding a DHX2, the new yes. DHX2. I've got so. two different coil springs sitting on my desk right now, waiting <laughs> yeah. for a DHX2. Oh man, uh, let's see. Um, someone is wondering if World Cup riders, or no, if some DH riders would start to ride 38s instead of 40s in World Cups for weight. I don't think I so. I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, you, you never know. Who knows? But, um, I guess I'd have to look at the weight. I don't think the weight savings is going to be significant enough to reduce the travel. And I think the speeds that those guys are hitting stuff at, I mean, especially if you're a Fox athlete, to go from a dual crown 40 mil stanchion to a single crown 38 mil stanchion is a pretty significant difference in flex. Here's a good question. Uh, Jayhorn Smith asks, I have a 2016 160 millimeter Fox 34. Is it worth it going to a 160 36 or the 170 38 or just to have a complete strip and rebuild on my 2016 fork? And that really comes down to if you want a stiffer fork. Yeah, I mean, those, those are all three different chassis, mm -hmm. so it, it, you know, it's apples and oranges. Um, you know, if you wanted a beefier fork and you wanted an upgrade damper, then certainly go for, you know, a 36, possibly a 38. If your bike came with a 34 on it, it's probably shorter in travel and meant, probably not meant to do the things that you're gonna do on a 38. Yeah. So I would say in most instances, a 36 would be definitely a better applied to a bike that came with a 34. That totally, that's about all you can say about that subject. I mean, 34 to 38 is a big step that's up. That's a big jump. So 34 to a 36 is a noticeable difference. We get that question emailed to us a lot oh. with customers that have like a 140, 130 travel bike, generally like 140. Um, and they're either looking to bump their travel up to 150 or stay at 140 and they just want a stiffer fork. And they ask if it's gonna be noticeable. 34 to a 36 is a noticeable difference on the trail, and it's not one of those things that is even like a gimmicky thing trying to sell you on stuff. It is a noticeable it's difference. It's a huge jump. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. especially when you're riding rocky, rough, fast stuff, you can yeah. feel a 34, especially getting noodly at that 140, 150 range. Yeah, the heavier you are or the more aggressive you are, the, the more benefit you'll have to a stiffer fork and you know, maybe not notice the weight as much. Yep. Um, let's see. Someone said we're doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really we're, thirsty and the laptop's about to die, but uh, we're, we're, a little we're trying one. our best. So, oh, but we're, we're probably gonna wrap this up here soon. We've been going for about 48 minutes or so. Um, we, we really like answering your questions. It's nice because we could just kind of rant when we're doing live stuff yeah, instead of- Maybe uh, we'll do another Q&A video sometime. Yeah, hey, when we get the 38, yeah. You can do another one. Yeah. Um, we'll have a little bit more like ingrained information in our brain at that point too. So um, someone asked, um, did Fox add stanchion markings to set sag on the new forks? No, they did not. And we are a fan of no markings like RockShox um, or not doing markings like RockShox does. It comes in handy in a certain instance. I personally, I don't like setting sag on a fork per se, I think. I like to set it up in the rear and then have my fork match how the rear feels and not rely on a dead set number uh, on my fork in terms, of, in terms of sag. And then the other thing too is we get a lot of calls of, hey, I just got a, a RockShox, they do come with the, the markings on there and something's wrong with my fork, it sits at this much travel. And all of these forks, the Fox and the RockShox, there's, there's a dimple inside the leg where the air transfers from the positive to the negative chamber. And so from fully extended, your fork's always gonna sit down just a little bit. Some sit down more than others. And I think it confuses more people than helps people really, honestly. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Okay, comments, 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 comments. Um... Someone asked about the Vivid Air. The Vivid Air is just kind of like a shock they, that doesn't really exist anymore. They haven't made the Vivid Air in a few years. Uh, really, the Super Deluxe Ultimate would be their most downhill shock that uh, the RockShox has currently. 
Um, Nathan Virtue says 2021 36 grip two is only 160 max travel now, or is that just recommended max? That's recommended. That's factory settings. Um, so you can technically run this at 130, 140, 150, 160, or 170 via uh, the air shaft in yeah. here. So you could just put a longer or shorter air shaft in yeah. there. How, um, how Fox is kind of in their marketing what I think what they're saying, and this was what was conveyed to me in the marketing meeting, um, was that if you're going 170, then maybe you should be thinking about a 38. Um, but if you're going lower, then maybe you should be thinking about a 34. But there's a lot of customers that want to put exactly. a 140 yeah. millimeter Fox 36 in their bike. Yep. And, and they're, they're not saying you can't do it. They're just saying, here's, here's our target audience. Mm -hmm. Here's what's going to work best. And here's just how we're going to make of that, thousands then, of forks yeah. <laughs> instead of making like yep. a million different forks. So, so you can definitely still do it. Um, do you know if, so on the previous 36, if you had a 27 and a half, you could run it at 180, but not on a 29er. Do you know on this one, Mike? Uh, so, sorry, say that again. 180 possibilities with a 36, 27 and a half. It was capable before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if it's capable now. I don't know. Which, um, I, I do think if you're going with a with a 180, regardless, I think you're a 38 customer. Someone asked if there's anything new with the Fox 40 Grip 2 damper. Yes, same revisions mm -hmm. as the 36 and 38 Grip 2 damper. So um, and new lowers and new lowers. Yep. Yeah. And cool heritage colors, Battleship Gray. I don't know about the crowns if they changed them. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, let's see. Someone asked if we're fans of sag markings on rear shocks. Um, I mean, I. I like them more. I like the them on shock shocks more. Then yeah. you know, I always get out my little metric ruler. I'm, I want things just so. Um, but uh, yeah, the markings. If you're just doing, checking your air pressure by sag. You know, in the morning, before a ride, sit on it, see if it's still the same. Um, then yeah, it's handy for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we just uh, we got to wrap this up. We're running late. We got to close up shop here in about three minutes. Um, I don't think uh, there's many questions we can get to real quick. Someone asked if the 38 would be a good match for e-bikes. Yes, it would. You can get a 36 e-bike specific or a 38 e-bike yeah. specific or just a regular 38. Especially on the e-bike. Um, yeah, especially especially on an e-bike. A bit long well, travel e-bike, 38 is going to be awesome. The way I'd want to ride yeah. an e-bike? Oh, yeah, 38, 38. for sure. Um, someone's asking, um, let's see, um, 180 millimeter 29er with Fox 38s. Yes, the 38. Yep. And either 27.5 or 29 can be set at 150, 160, 170, or 180. Um, sweet. Um, someone said they just ordered it. I hope that you ordered it from us. It supports our channel right. and keeps us riding bicycles. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Um, there are a bunch of questions rolling in, guys, but unfortunately, we have got to close shop. Thank you guys so much for joining. Yeah. Um, it's our pleasure uh, chatting about the new 36 and the 38 and some shock tech talk as well. Yeah, if you uh, have more in-depth questions, feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, yeah, call, live chat. Alex loves live chat. Yep, we got Alex out there. Well, we got Cal cameraman Alex here, and we got other Alex out there doing sales on that peer on that live chat. Yeah. It, you know, makes a really annoying noise, and then Alex will run over to the computer and answer all your questions right away. He'll be stoked to talk Try, to you. Tries his best. Yep. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. there's more than uh, we can get uh -huh. to at the moment. So. But, uh, yeah, so guys, feel free, hit us up, info at thelostco.com. Give us a call, 360, they're not going to remember it, 3068827. Anyway, um, my laptop's about to die. We are thirsty as hell, and we got to close the shop in one minute. So until right. next time, happy trails, everybody. We're going to go drink some water. All right. Bye. And.